inertial forces are the fictitious forces that act due to the inertia of objects moving with respect to a reference frame. We experience this every day when we are getting off an escalator or when a car that we are traveling in is brought to sudden rest, the tendency to move forward is due to the inertia. In terms of energy, the passengers in a moving car are carrying some kinetic energy. When the car comes to a sudden rest, the kinetic energy of passengers is not transferred into any other form. So they'll continue to move forward and may potentially injure themselves. If the passengers are wearing seat belts, then the seat belt will provide support and stop the passengers from moving forward and in this process transforms the kinetic energy of the passengers into internal energy of the belt. In case of an impact, when the airbags are deployed, the passengers might be carrying a lot of kinetic energy which may be too much for just the seat belt. In that case, the airbags will absorb the rest of the kinetic energy from the passengers. Mathematically, the inertial effects are introduced in the governing equations by including the mass term. Note that forces such as gravitational and centrifugal forces are all considered as inertial effects. However, just mere presence of these forces does not make the analysis time dependent. For instance, if you look at the wings of this light aircraft, they are deforming under their own weight. The inertial forces are acting in the form of gravity, but there is no net acceleration in the part. As a result, the system can be considered as a static system and a time domain is not necessary to, anal to analyze stresses in the part. Similarly, in case of the engine rotor in the front, the centrifugal forces are significant. Once again, these are inertial forces. But if the angular acceleration remains constant, the centrifugal forces remain constant and there is no net acceleration due to them. In both the cases, they can be treated as applied loads and the load vector is added to the reaction force vector. This way, such a problem can be treated as a static analysis. So, how does one decide whether the time domain analysis is required or not? Let's use our recommendation from previous section and follow the kinetic energy of the system. Neither the gravity nor the rotor centrifugal forces are adding additional kinetic energy into the system. As a result, the kinetic energy of the system remains constant and may be treated as a static analysis. If the same aircraft is making maneuvers in the sky, then the kinetic energy is no longer constant and it will need a time domain analysis to analyze it. 